Okay, let's go ahead and solve two questions from the Carnot heat engine topic. One will be in British gravitational, which is the second question, and one will be in SI, which is the first question that I'm going to solve. Okay, so here it says a Carnot heat engine has a thermal efficiency of 65%. So it's a reversible engine, and it says that this is the efficiency of 0.65 or 65%. It says that this engine receives 600 kilojoules of heat transfer from a heat source at 600 del uh, Celsius. So let me draw this so we are on the same page. This is TH, this is TL, this is my heat engine, this is the net output from it, net out. This is my QH that I received from high temperature reservoir, and this is the heat that I waste into the low temperature sink. It says this engine receives 650. So is that QL or QH? That is QH. Right, that is 650 kilojoules, and my TH is also given as 600 Celsius. Okay, so you see, let's proceed. So this is reversible, is uh, 1 minus TL by TH, which will be 1 minus QL by QH. So I know this part, okay. Uh, but the first part of the question asks me about what is the heat transfer to the ambient. So this is the surrounding, so you can see it's asking about QL. So then I better use this equation, right? Because this is 0 0.65, right? This QH is known as 650 kilojoules. So if I write it a little bit better, um, 0 0.65 is equal to 1 minus QL by QH, which is 650, right? Um, so then this means that this number is 0 0.35, right? Because uh, for this equation to be valid, so now my QL turns out to be 650 times 0 0.35, and that turns out to be 227.5 kilojoules. So that's what it is. That's the first answer to the question. Okay. Um, so let's go to part B. It says temperature of the heat sink. So it's asking about TL in Celsius. Okay. So this reversible will be equal to 1 minus. This time around, I'm going to use this relationship. Not a big deal. I'm in an exam. I'm doing fairly fast so that I can move on to the next question and I write this and I write this to be 0 0.35 and so basically TL turns out to be 0 0.35 times 600 right and you expect a very good credit and bam the, the, the exam comes back and this is not the right answer what happened in here I'm gonna leave you two seconds to figure out what the mistake is in here you did you were not careful you were being very fast. See, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, fix this. Why did we say about the Carnot heat engine efficiency? I knew the absolute temperatures. A Celsius absolute temperature. Is that a temperature scale for thermodynamics? No, nope. that is Kelvin. So I have that 273. You see what happened? I did this on purpose to make a point, okay? So you can see in here now, it's gonna be a little bit different. I think this is 0 0.35, but this time around, my TL turns out to be 600, so that is 873, right, times 0 0.35, and this becomes 305.55 Kelvin, but it is asking me in Celsius, so now I'm going to subtract 273 from this, and this will also be equal to 32.55 Celsius, that is the answer, okay, so that was the part B, so let's write to your part A, let's write to your part B, and let's, what, let's see what else is left. Net output of this engine. So it's asking me, oh, I had the next question, so I was fairly generous, but I can squeeze that in, that's gonna be fine, okay? Actually, I go up here, that's where I can write this, the part C, because I need to use the first law. It's asking me net output. Looking at this cycle, it's a system that I pick, and what I can get is my W net out will be equal to QH minus QL, right? From first law, right? This QH is coming in, this, QL is coming out, WNet is coming out. So when you write the first law, you get this. And this QH was given to me in the question as 650 kilojoules. And this QL was something I find, 2 to 7.5 kilojoules, right? And then the difference of those two will be my uh, the answer to part C, and that will be WNet out will be 4 to 2.5 kilojoules, okay? Okay, so that does it for the first question. Now I want to move on to the second question. Um, again, as long as you're careful, these are kind of like easy, okay? Uh, a heat engine operating between the heat source with a T of one, 1,500 Fahrenheit and a heat sink with a temperature of 95 Fahrenheit wastes heat 
at a rate of 30,000 BTU per hour to the surrounding. Okay, before I move on, let me write what I know. But before that, let's again recap. I'll do very fast this time because I wrote this a couple times now. This is QH, this is QL, this is W net out because I need to have I need to really know this. Okay. I did this question on purpose. One thing I want to highlight is this. It doesn't say Carnot anywhere, right? But there's no other way you will be able to solve this. Sometimes we do this in the thermodynamics books too. We, we don't mention the Carnot, but you need to assume it, okay? So then what actually the answer, the real answer, which is a proper way of asking this, is asking about the maximum efficiency of this engine and maximum power of this, and, uh, of this uh, engine. But okay, I wanted to make a point because you may see this often, right? Um, so let's, let's proceed. Um, now, it says that TH is equal to 1500 Fahrenheit, heat sinks, TL is equal to 95, huge difference, right? Uh, waste heat, so that is, heat waste is QL, dot obviously, it is 30,000 BTU per hour. Let's look at the first part, part A is the efficiency of the engine, okay? So a reversible engine, that's what I can do, 1 minus TL by TH. Um, now it's, it, it got old already, I cannot fool you, but am I going to write here 95, am I going to write here 1500? Nope, I, I, I will not. Why? Yeah, because I'm going to convert this to Rankin, and Rankin is 95 plus 460, right? That's the TL, the TH will be 1500 plus 460. So then I simply go ahead and punch this into my calculator, and I get myself 71.7%, okay? So that was the efficiency, maximum efficiency of this engine. In real life, if you find the efficiency of this engine to be 80%, what does that mean? If you made a mistake or you're a billionaire? I think the first option sounds more uh, you know, reasonable to me. Um, because this is the maximum efficiency, 71.7. So most likely your engine efficiency will be you know, significantly lower than this. Okay? But let's also talk about the maximum power output of this engine that I can you know, extract from it. And I'm asking in terms of the horsepower. Fine, not a big deal. Okay? So now I'll write this this way. 1 minus QL by QH, okay? Obviously, as it's non-dimensional, I can write like this because that's what is given to me, okay? So now I know my 71.1% uh, is this, right? The reversible, so that's going to be 0 0.717 will be 1 minus uh, Q.L is 30,000 BTU per hour divided by, obviously, my Q.H. Okay, um, so another way of doing this, I just want to highlight this, but this Q dot L by Q dot H is equal to T dot L by T dot T, T H. Sometimes this is easier to write into your calculator. Both options will give you the same answer, so I want to write both ways, okay? And in, he in here, if I, you write like this, this is going to be 30,000 divided by Q dot H will be, remember, you need to convert this, so this is going to be 95 plus 460 is uh, 560, 555. This is easy, 1960, uh, right? So again, one of the other, obviously you're gonna get the same answer. I just wanna highlight uh, the alternative ways of doing it. And you're gonna get this to be 105, 9, 4, 6 BTU per hour, okay? Fine, but that's not what the question is asking me. It's about asking the maximum power I can extract from this inner engine. So then I'll do the first law. I should do it here, but I run out of space, okay? So you can see I'm gonna apply the same thing as I did before. So my W dot this time around net output will be Q dot H minus Q dot L. And this is 105, I'm copy pasting from here, BTU per hour minus 30,000 BTU per hour. So this will give me 75,946 BTU per hour. I mentioned this a couple times already, but 2544.5 or 4, doesn't matter. Uh, BTU per hour is equal to one horsepower. I get this uh, engine output and the, to be 29 point, obviously what I did was, well, let me finish it, 85 horsepower, okay? But uh, obviously what I did was I divided this by this value, right, to get how many uh, number of horsepower I have. So the maximum horsepower I can get from this particular engine with that particular input is right around 30 horsepower. In reality, I will get more less, okay, in actuality. But that's uh, all I have in this segment. Thank you for watching this. Have a good day. Bye-bye.